When Drake dropped, everybody and their mama posted his album. If Thug drops, the whole industry posted. Travis drops, the whole industry posted. Youngboy dropped, and it was not that many. You might say, well, Youngboy don't f with nobody. And, and that's true. Youngboy in the last year has been on collabs with Future, Migos, Nicki Minaj. Did all of them post his album? Did they show the support? I, I think that Youngboy was used in a good capacity for other artists when they needed singles. It kind of shows me how clicky the industry is. If you're a part of the click, they basically you out. But if you're not really that clicky with everybody, they act like and he was rap. After starting his career at 14 with a microphone that he purchased from a Louisiana Walmart, Youngboy has gone from strength to strength, over time becoming one of the most successful and fiercely adored artists of his generation. Along the way, he's racked up five number ones and plenty of platinum certified projects. Given his accolades, a hip hop layman will be forgiven for thinking that Youngboy's journey to achieve such success had come through being a manufactured product fresh off the major label assembly line. But in fact, it's come in spite of his fractious relationship with his label, Atlantic. And after signing to the world famous conglomerate in 2017, Youngboy quickly returned to doing what he did best and continued to build the hype in preparation for his first studio album until Death Call My Name in 2018. But by the time he was gearing up to release his sophomore project, Top, in September 2020, any hopes of a harmonious relationship between them had all but disintegrated. After having his attempts to buy his masters rejected, in spite of the fact that he offered his next four albums for free, Youngboy would begin to express his displeasure with the label at every opportunity. And if his assessment of the situation is to be believed, it's basically resulted in them attempting to blackball him. Sparked by the removal of his Colors mixtape from an Apple Music chart, YB suggested that his label was trying to place roadblocks in the way of his success. I was going number one two weeks straight with a mixtape, so they took it down off the charts. I don't give a f you still can't stop me. He wrote via a YouTube community post. Don't sign to Atlantic. If you an artist, they're not going to support you, especially if you live a certain way. Angered but undeterred, Youngboy has barely taken his foot off the gas since, and went on the offensive once more during a defiant track with Birdman where he spoke about how they tried to block me out, blackball, but they see me now. And while it can be hard to reconcile the notion of being blackballed with having 20 projects that have entered the top 20 to your name, it turns out that these days, there's more reasons than ever for them to want to take Youngboy down a peg. Recently, the news that Better Than You, his collaborative project with DaBaby just sold 30k in the first week, has aroused the suspicion of many. Not least of all, the always inquisitive Joe Budden. Youngboy being a part of anything to sell 30,000 uh, week one looks fishy. I know what he do. And I know what he just finished doing. He just finished beating Drake for the number one album. Then he was tied. He was close for the next five weeks. You know what he do on YouTube. You know what he do. He run the numbers up. They're supposed to get 2.5 million. Because you would assume yeah. that this goes. And then young boy just pops up saying, y'all, Atlantic. And now magically, beating Drake. <laughs> that. Mm -hmm. It looks like there's not there's no support there. Absolutely. No, see, it looked like more than that. It looked like this is stepped on. <laughs> Engaged in a cold war with the company that owns his likeness, Youngboy finds himself in a rare position of realizing that his record deal doesn't benefit him at all. Denounced by independent pioneers such as Master P and Russ, Youngboy's deal has been a subject of controversy for years now. And considering that he signed for an alleged $2 million, it's not hard to see why. In fact, his YouTube numbers alone would prove that he's had anything but a fair shake. Over the years, Youngboy's videos have accumulated over 9 billion views. And while Drake has reigned supreme on the other streaming platforms, Youngboy has long been the king of YouTube. NBA Youngboy's YouTube page generates 292 million views a month, revealed academics in a 2021 tweet, which means YouTube pays out his label approximately 1.4 million a month, approximately 16.8 million per year just for his YouTube content. If this is true, it suggests that he's been nothing less than exploited, and now it appears that Youngboy is trying his best to be the whistleblower to stop other artists from signing. Well, I think as you learn the business, you learn how badly you've been taken advantage of. I ain't never got paid from YouTube a day in my life make all the money off my youtube and then give me a small percentage out of my all that slavery son. but you know that's what we signed up for business although he acknowledged that his own youthful naivety and eagerness to sign to a label helped to create the problem young boy's public campaign to get artists to refuse to sign to atlantic has likely made him public enemy number one in their headquarters however it's notable that rather than release this unruly employee as they would with anyone working behind a desk they've tried everything to hold on to him in a clear-cut example of why it'd be in their interest to kill his momentum, Academics, who is one of the few media figures that Youngboy talks to at this point, believes that they're now making a concerted effort to clip his commercial wings. If we're Atlantic Records, it makes no sense that we spend and we exhaust every option to send them off the label with a bang, knowing we already control 
all of his masters. We own it. Young boy turned down every deal they, they sent to him. If he drops an album selling another 150, his <clears throat> leverage is so crazy that they either got to go double in the amount of money they offer him now, or they got to let him walk. It's in their best interest that he don't go too crazy, that he could be humbled and think, hey, let me stay with Atlantic. That's why I say he going to do between 120, 130 and 170. Atlantic don't want him to be independent. Trust me. Although it seems plausible that Atlantic are looking to smother his hype in fear of losing out on the profits, it should be noted that they don't account for the total sum of the industry. Adamant that the boardrooms will never back him if he doesn't live a certain way, Youngboy has also created a rod for his own back with an unsavory beef that pits him against a fellow heavyweight in the game. In recent times, Youngboy's taken up the mantle from his Never Broke Again signee, Quando Rondo, in order to feud with Lil Durk and the OTF crew. And in recent tracks, he's even slandered the memory of the late King Von, whom Quando's friend, Lil Tim, is widely believed to be responsible for the death of at every opportunity. Unsurprisingly, devoting any energy into besmirching the name of a dead man isn't exactly going to appease corporate higher-ups. However, the other wrinkle comes from the fact that while Youngboy is a notoriously insular artist who rarely does a feature or allows for guest appearances on his mixtapes, Dirk literally works with everybody. As a result, many people believe that when given the choice of which bridge to burn, artists have sided with Dirkio. You got him and um, Quando and a lot of with Dirk. You gotta be a certain type of artist to be able to just in the middle if you kicking it like a yo brother so the situation on that i feel like so if it's me don't be in my face with all that like and then be with a who you know kill my boy keep your over there i ain't we ain't doing that while being ensnared by street politics is one thing it seems that much of the broader musical community are distancing themselves from young boys side too and in the estimations of academics it appears that the king von situation has made public support for young boy a dangerous proposition when Drake dropped, everybody in their mama posted his album. If Thug drops, the whole industry posted. Travis drops, the whole industry posted. Youngboy dropped, and it was not that many. I, I think that Youngboy was used in a good capacity for other artists when they needed singles. Did they reciprocate? It kind of shows me how clicky the industry is. If you're a part of the click, they basically you out you're then spread thin to save everybody's career and give everybody a moment but if you're not really that clicky with everybody they act like and he was rap i'm wondering if the latest situation with Quando rondo may affect people showing love especially industry dudes dirk is on fire right now dirk was following young boy unfollowed him as soon as his page came back up i'm wondering if that affects anything i was told Quando Rondo wasn't getting industry support, and it's kind of a reliable source, because if certain entities or people support him in the industry, it would mean they're going against the other side. A feud which Julio Julio deems as big and potentially volatile as the war between Pac and Biggie, it appears that not only has the beef had the unintended effect of minimizing his list of potential collaborators, but has labels doing calculations as to whether they can sign him. Prone to laying out menacing messages to his enemies and money, Youngboy's also facing a potential seven years behind bars at the moment. As a result, there's every chance that if he was even slightly less successful, then he'd be seen as damaged goods. But, with the exception of the DaBaby debacle, all signs suggest that even if the industry tries to stifle him, the people won't. In October of last year, Youngboy joined the illustrious ranks of Tubac and Lil Wayne to become the third man to score a number one album from behind bars, once again with very little promotion from Atlantic. Respected among his peers that exist beyond the street sphere, it's also been reported that new music with a fully fledged pop star and Lil Nas X could be on the way. Meanwhile, one of the culture's most uncompromising innovators has been doing his part to let the world know that Youngboy is simply misunderstood. Send in love to NBA Youngboy, man, for real. He's such a sweetheart, dude. Like, we kicked it a few times. Like, that is a sweet person, bro. Like, I think he's just evil. Like, no, he's like fun. Similarly co-signed by Childish Gambino, who showed his solidarity with Youngboy by changing his Twitter profile to the embattled rapper, NBA has no shortage of powerful admirers. And even if his own label might be doing their utmost to suppress him and create the illusion of downturn and fortunes, it hasn't stopped him from earning his first Grammy nomination with his Tyler collab, What's Your Name? Regarded as such a surefire hitmaker, his reputation now precedes him to such a degree that his features reportedly command a price tag of over 300000 And while this may seem like a lot, it'd be hard to argue with the data behind it. As of February, he'd surpassed both Future and Mr. Platinum with no features himself, J. Cole, in terms of quantity of the RIAA certifications. And even more impressively, he's done it while being 18 years their junior. 
Left in a unique position where he's both in turmoil and thriving at the exact same time, Youngboy's brand may be toxic, but that doesn't mean for one second that it isn't financially profitable. Set to become a free agent, Youngboy has a chance to cast off the shackles of major label intervention and set a new benchmark for independent artists. So long as his prolific workload is sustained and the fans stay as rapidly behind him as ever, then there's every chance that, blackballed or not, NBA Youngboy can't be stopped.